Hi, my name is Igor, and I'm a 3D printing noob. Welcome to my channel. So, I have embarked on this 3D printing journey a couple of months ago, so yes, I'm still a noob, I'm still learning. And today I wanted to share some of my observations regarding various slicer behaviors, and specifically different results in vase mode. Ah, yes, the vase mode. The vase mode that we all know and love. So, a few weeks ago, I have created a small, not so small, vase-shaped object for my wife to store her uh, cosmetic brushes or perhaps put some flowers in it. Uh, anyway, I have used a very nice video provided by uh, Angus from Maker's Muse on how to loft these organic-looking phases in Fusion 363. Real easy. The uh, link to that video is going to be in the description. Uh, so, here's the result. I've created this simple vase in, in Fusion 360. It took me 10 minutes to do so. Then. I've imported the STL file into Cura, sliced it, and printed it in this Inland Natural PLA. Looks pretty good, right? But, do you notice anything? Yes. So, as you may see, there is, there is some sort of a scar. See? There is a like a spiral scar going all around the vase. Right, right to the top. Yes, it ends right here. So yeah, then it follows this fold somehow. So yeah. Uh yeah, such a pity. Okay, I thought. Maybe this is this is some material property. I mean, this this I I I had a few problems with this particular PLA in, in the past. So well, maybe it's maybe it's a material. So what I did, I created another small vase-shaped object and printed it in a green PETG and. Uh, let's see, not sure if you can see it, I hope you can, because there is a similar scar. Yeah, it's, it is less noticeable. Yeah, but it is still there. Yeah, I hope, yeah, yeah, at least I can see it. So, okay. This made me think, okay, this was the slicer problem. Well, my trusty Cura, I was surprised actually. Never seen this before. Uh, this is probably the first time I've started exploiting vase mode. So I tried another trusty slicer called Slicer. And the result was plain awful. I mean, look at this. Looks like skip layers or something, some ridges right here, which are not supposed to be there. Yeah, see, it's, 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 I don't even know, fuckers, come on. Mm, yeah. So you can see some, some weird stringing. This is vase mode, it shouldn't be doing that. Some ridges, see? Uh, yeah, right here. I don't know, what's this? Okay, so Slicer failed miserably. Okay, then there was a third one. So there is a, seems to be a less known uh, Slicer called Idea Maker. And here is the result of idea makers work. It is flawless. 
it looks really nice no scars no ridges smooth and very nice so yeah i was actually quite surprised that trusty slicers failed and this less popular one actually succeeded okay let's take a look at what slicers actually tell us uh, so i have this model loaded in cura and already sliced in, in base mode so yeah cura shows nothing in particular everything is smooth no scars no nothing and yet it, it produces the same result and I actually tried a few different models in Cura and they all have this kind of scar I'm gonna insert a video clip of my printer printing the model sliced in Cura and you can actually see the print head stuttering at certain places and producing this scar So, see, nothing. Okay, now let's go to, to Slicer. Slicer, uh, yeah, same model, space mode, same material, same settings, same everything. Okay, let's see. So, up to a certain point, everything is okay. But see, here is the ridge. See? Some weird noise here. Yeah, and there as well. Man, oh my god. Look at this. It's only on one side of the model. It's yeah, it's not on this side. It's not there's nothing here, there's nothing here. There is these weird weird protrusions here. So I don't really know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go all the way again up to a certain point yep and then they disappear is it because of the sharp angles here 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 i don't know there is also a sharp angle here but it doesn't produce this these images this side see there is also a sharp angle here nothing but at least it is honest with me and shows that there is something going on here okay and idea maker idea maker again everything is very smooth and very nice and in fact it is print quality was good so idea maker is created and maintained by race 3d they created it for their brand of printers but it actually supports custom configurations so that's what I did I've set up my one how i3 plus duplicator in it, enter it, enter it parameters, and it, it works, and it works just fine, and it actually may become my to-go slicer, especially uh, when I'm trying to do something in the in baseball. Uh, its interface is a little bit wonky, it lacks in certain aspects, for instance, you cannot specify different temperatures for different for like the first layer and the subsequent layers which is kind of a standard feature feature for 
other slicers. On the other hand, it is the only free slicer that I know which supports uh, custom supports. No pun intended. And actually, supports generated by uh, Idea Maker are very good, uh, easily detachable, and leave minimum scarring on the surface. I've actually printed a few Pokemon for my son. Some of them in sli I've sliced in Cura, some of them I've sliced in Idea Maker. And Idea Maker version was somehow consistently more, consistently smoother. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have those models handy. I'm, I'm gonna print a little bit, a, a few more, and then I'll, I'll show it. But anyway, uh, yeah. The interface is a little bit wonky, it's a little bit, mm, it's not that polished, but it's okay. I mean, it's not, it's not like it's unusable, it's, it's okay. Okay, here I have a Pikachu model loaded in Idea Maker. So yeah, I mean, you can do standard things, you can move your model, scale it, you can you can even cut it if you need. Uh, yeah, there's a max fit function, so it makes it as big as it will fit into your printer. Uh, so yes, here the thing: support. Let's create auto supports. Uh, why you not create? Oh, is it thinking? Oh, I need, I need, I need to actually select the model. Yeah. See? So, suppose this overhang is too sharp for my printer, so I can just add more. Which, this is pretty cool. I mean, this is, this is a feature you don't usually find in, uh, in free slicers. And yeah, this one is free. See? You can even remove some of, of the origin rated supports. See? Suppose I decide that I don't need supports here in Pikachu's crotch, so I can just move them. Yeah, so I like it. I like it. I mean, the interface is... It's, it's a little bit unusual, so to actually change your uh, material setting, you actually need to start slicing, and here you select your profile. Also, the profile capabilities are relatively limited. I mean, limited, say, compared to the latest version of Cura. Like, you can only set one temperature for the entire print. You can set different fan speeds, but not the, uh, not different temperatures. Or, yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, it, ha it has only two types of infill. Well, actually, in most cases, this this is this should be quite enough for anything, for like your basic prints. And again, this this uh, custom support feature feature is is awesome. Again, for for a free slicer, it's it's amazing. And these supports are really good. I mean, they are sturdy, but they break off easily and leave minimum scaring, so I like it. So thank you guys for sticking with me until the end. Uh, 
If you like this video, please click that like button. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section. Share it. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel. There is going to be more uh, nerdy stuff, as well as some videos of my puppy, Arthur the Corgi. So if you are into that kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. With that all said, bye, and don't forget to have fun.